Hi, my name's Penny. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about the books that I read in June, even though it's quite late. And also I did already do like a mid-June wrap-up and I didn't read that many books in the second half of June. Still, I do want to talk about the ones that I did read. So in total I read nine books in the month of June, five of which I already talked about in my mid-month wrap-up. So primarily we've just got to talk about four books. So firstly, let's talk audiobooks. Now I'd already talked about The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin that I read and also Natural Automage by Ellie Modisett Jr. And the third audiobook that I read in the second half of the month actually relates to Natural Automage and that is Mage Guard of Haymore by Ellie Modisett Jr. And that is the... I can never remember the numbers. So Natural Order Mage and The Mage Gun of Hamor are the 14th and 15th books in the Saga of Recluse series that I have been listening to on audiobook this year, trying to get through the whole series, or at least caught up, because I, I think he's still writing them. And these books are chunkers, like 500 plus pages, although audiobooks makes them like 20 something hours. It's a lot to get through. Um, in general, the series kind of jumps around in the timeline of this world where they have like chaos and order magic and it tends to be all about people learning their place in the world and learning about their magical abilities and, and figuring out that balance between the two. And he tends to write like one or two books just set at a particular time following a particular, particular character. So Natural Order Mage and Mage Guard of Hamer both follow the same character. I've forgotten his name, Ravel? Anyway, he's like this little shit who never listens to anyone, complains that stuff isn't fair all the time, doesn't think for himself, eventually learns to be responsible and goes to Hamer to fight in Hamer. I did think in this one that there was just a bit too much war. I think a lot of them have these mages fighting in wars, different wars throughout the time. It's not really what I like about the series. What I like is the magic system and the philosophy and people learning stuff. But the tactics of war just bore me immensely. And also the narrator always does this thing where whenever they shout commands in the book, he yells. And often I'm listening to this like in the car during my commute and having someone yell at me is the last thing I want. But anyway, I did also read the 17th, 16th, the 16th book in this series earlier in July. So now I've only got 17, 18, 19, 20 to go. I'm pretty close. I'm pretty close to catching up. Oh yeah, then I did also read one more audiobook this month and that was Binti. And I'm not even going to attempt to say the author's name because I know I will screw it up, but I will probably have put it here. So this was a super short audiobook. It follows this woman who is really smart and respected in on her planet, which is a planet where they tend to not leave, even though there's all sorts of like interplanetary stuff going on in the universe but they're also a dark-skinned race and a lot of their cultural practices are looked down upon by people from the rest of the I keep wanting to say of the world but I guess of the galaxy or the universe or however big it is I don't really know so then Binti gets accepted to go to this um, special university off on another planet and leaving the planet is not really something her people do. So now a lot of her people are judging her for wanting to leave and she basically goes on this journey where she learns about more about what's going on outside of her planet and about how people see her people and who she is as an individual. I found it really interesting. I really liked the character of Binti. I do wish it had been longer because I think there are some really interesting concepts and I believe it's just, um, a sh it is actually a series, it's a trilogy, but I think all the other books are really short too, so that's a bit sad. Also, I can't really say why, but in my head it reminded me a lot of, wrink of A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Lingo. I think that might be because it's short. Uh, it also had kind of traveling to different worlds, although in quite a different way. Um, and in my head, there's these kind of creatures that in my head seemed very similar to creatures from A Wrinkle in Time, although I think that's just my imagination playing tricks on me. So really, it's probably not much like A Wrinkle in Time, but that's what I thought of when I was reading it. 
All right, so then I also read an ebook, and that is Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson. I had actually put this on hold at the library for the Buzzword Readathon earlier in the month, but it didn't quite arrive on time, or I didn't quite get to it, or something. I don't know, June was a long time ago. I don't remember. We've got these two girls who have been practicing witchcraft after school, and then one of them winds up dead, uh, supposedly a suicide, but the other girl doesn't really believe it, so she uses witchcraft to bring her friend back from the dead to figure out what actually happened. But accidentally, she also brings back two other girls that had died, I think, about a week before her friend, and so now she's got three dead girls, and it's basically following their story of figuring out what happened to them. So in this book, I loved the dead girls and their dynamic and the different things they got up to. It was great. When I was reading stuff with dead girls, <laughs> I was really enjoying this book. But the other bits, there's quite a lot of build up before she actually brings the girls back from the dead. And I found most of that quite boring. And there's also this weird romance thing going on, which eventually fits into the plot quite well. But in the beginning and until I found out what was going on, I, I just romance in me, hey? Not my thing. So I didn't really like the romance, I found it a bit cool. And in general there are a few characters that I just really didn't like, except for the dead girls, of course, I love the dead girls. So I probably would say that if you like like contemporary paranormal, this book is worth a read, but you know, you can kind of just skim through the stuff that doesn't have dead girls in it. So I did also read two physical books, which I believe I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up, and that is Girl of Stars, which again I had gotten for the Buzzword Readathon. I don't know when that was and whether I actually read it for the Buzzword Readathon. But anyway, I've already talked about that. Um, and also the other one was The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock by Imogen Hermes Goa. And that book was really weird, but it had some cool bits in it, and I actually enjoyed it. But I talked about it in more detail in the other video, so we don't need to get into that one either. So then graphic novels, I read two graphic novels in June. The first one was Lock and Key number two. Again, I've already talked about it. And then the last one I read was the Babysitter's Club book number one graphic novel version, Kirsty's Great Idea. Now, like most of the books that I've talked about in this video, I already had to return them to the library, of course, because we're very late. Uh, but I do have this actual version of Kirsty's Great Idea, and what I found interesting is the, the graphic novel version was about 190 pages, and this one is only like 150 pages, so I know that the graphic novel one was definitely a quicker read because it is just mostly pictures and there's a lot less words in the page, but these books are really quick to read through too, so I'm actually thinking I might reread this soon just so I can compare it uh, more closely to the graphic novel version. I haven't read this book in a long time. This is a book that I got when I was like seven. But I love this series. I have a massive collection of them in my wardrobe. Uh, so I am going to continue reading the graphic novel series. I think they've done like the first six books. There's like a hundred books or something. I, I think I've only got up to about 60-ish. Maybe not all of them either. But anyway, I might reread some of these just for fun. They're very quick reads because they're made for children. What I did enjoy most about the story at the moment is actually Stacy's story. So Stacy has diabetes and in this volume she struggles with when to tell her new friends and she's worrying that when she tells them they're gonna like freak out about it, which of course they don't. So I have Crohn's disease and I do know it is really hard when you meet new people. Sometimes you're like, oh well I better tell them because this is something that has a big impact on my life and I don't want it to be a surprise when it you know, becomes an issue. But it's also something that can be really difficult to know when's the right time to say, by the way, I've got this chronic disease, especially when you don't know what people are going to know about it and what crazy ideas they might get. Anyway, I did really enjoy that and I know the second book is The Truth About Stacy, which goes into that a little bit more, so I should probably get to that soon. So that's the nine books that I read in June. Nine books is actually really impressive, but at the same time, the least amount of books that I've read any month this year, which is quite strange. 
but I had been saying that I wanted to dial back my reading a little bit and concentrate on some other areas of my life. To be honest, I didn't do that. I just read less and did less in June. June and July. <laughs> Honestly, June was not the best month, but so far I've been reading a lot more in July. Not so much catching up on the life thing, but definitely catching up on the reading thing, so we'll take it. Uh, do let me know if you've read any of the books that I talked about today. I'd love to talk to you about them down in the comments. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.